Hello everybody, my name is Steven and I am the campus staff at Cornell University. For the past several weeks, my students and I have been holding our large groups online. And we know that for many people out there, you may want to do that too, but may need some help to know how to plan your large groups, which used to be in person, but now have to be online. Here are some pieces and of advice that InterVarsity and I would like to give to you. One of the first things that you may want to keep in mind is to figure out your why, then who, then how. Your why is important because you don't want to just meet for the sake of simply meeting. If you don't have a clear idea of, or a goal of what your larger wants to accomplish, your students will eventually figure that they're just coming for what seems like maybe fun and they can figure out other things to do. What turns do you want your chapter to make? What do you want to see happen as a result of this large group? After you figure that out, a key important step is to figure out who do you want to come. At Cornell, one of the reasons of why we started gathering was that we realized that STAR students needed a community, a sense of bonding, even as they were all separated, and to combat that loneliness. They also, for some of them, were returning back to homes where there were mainly non-Christian families, and so they needed spiritual brothers and sisters to encourage them to continue seeking after Jesus and to pursue and to receive love from Him. For our who, you may want to be able to figure out, again, who do you want to come and who is this for? It might be very intimidating to have new coming students come into a Zoom call where there are 20 strange faces, all of whom already are talking and know each other, and they themselves may feel out of it. You need to then plan icebreakers or ways of welcoming and gathering those newcomers so that they can feel like they are part of this family and are wanted there. So again, figure out who are you playing this large group for. After you figure out the why and the who, then you need to figure out how are you going to carry out your large groups. At Cornell University, something that we did in our InterVarsity chapter was that we started to have a speaker, uh, we had worship in which we either streamed worship from YouTube or had some of our students pre-record their worship together. For some of our other large groups, Something we did was that we had students share testimonies and we took turns being interviewed and how scripture was changing and transforming their life. And then we practiced having a moment of Ignatian prayer together on large groups uh, and on Zoom. Something else that we did was that we also had uh, different prayer stations. And so we used this one website called Padlet and we had a column where people can write down uh, ways God is meaning them. Uh, another column where they can write ways in which they are lamenting and uh, need God's and help and are frustrated and can share that frustration. And the third one where they can share prayer requests of what they want God for them, uh, God wants them to do. So you can use that resource as well, f uh, figuring out how do you want to accomplish what you want large groups to do. Now for the second piece of advice, Something that you may want to then figure out is the roles that you need to make your large groups go smoothly. At Cornell, something that we did was that we had three main roles when accomplishing our large group. We had a facilitator or MC. We then had a tech person who did the slides and the breakout rooms the mute and the muting of people who may be disruptive. And then last, we had someone who was a scribe. And the scribe's job was to able to post a Google Doc table if we were involving people who are writing and reflecting things. Uh, they wrote up the questions and put them in the chats so that when we broke people up into breakout rooms, the questions were there in the chat so people remember what the question was. And those were the three main roles that we needed. For you, if you're leading your large groups, those roles may be different. You may need uh, in addition to a tech host or an MC or a scribe, you may need a, a worship leader who, again, has already pre-planned the worship, recorded it, or they themselves are leading online while everyone listens and mute themselves and worships in their own spaces. You may also need a prayer intercessor, someone who's just ready and praying, or maybe if someone types in the chat that they need prayer for something, uh, they can be brought into a breakout room with that person, and they can go pray with that person. You may also need a pre-party leader. And a pre-party leader is someone who kind of like gets the hype going. They uh, 
they gather on like maybe a different Zoom call or on Instagram Live, and they just begin to get everyone excited so that when large group starts, boom, everyone comes and they're already filled with vision and excitement. Those are some possible roles that you may need. You may not need all of them, but those are a few ideas. And lastly, a third piece of advice to give to you is to invite students. Now, this may seem pretty obvious, like, oh yeah, of course you need to invite people. But I think some of the things that we may take for granted is that that sense of rhythm on campus of like, oh yeah, tonight's Friday night, come to large group. That is lost when people go back home. There's a new rhythm, there's a new routine. And so it's going to be very key and important to have you and your student leaders invite people who may otherwise be distracted, feel like, ah, maybe like I'm just back home now, I can go back to high school life uh, where I can make play games on Friday night with my friends or just uh, chill at home doing nothing. It's so much easier to do that than to come and take the risk of trying out something new like an online large group. You may want to invite people through an individual text message or through an Instagram post on social media. You may want to do it through a message on GroupMe, have your most influential leader uh, raise up the hype and just get people on board. But make sure it's key that you invite students because right now, more than ever, uh, it's tempting to be able to stay at home and to not do anything. And so having friends pull and invite them along is going to help them feel wanted, loved, and definitely going to help bring them in the room than if you were just going to assume that so. So a last piece of advice is to invite students. And those are some tips that we have for you and we hope that your online large groups will go well this summer and that God will meet you. Peace and blessings to you all.